Good morning everybody. I am Dr. Uday Kumar Khan and welcome to my class once again. And today I am going to give you a demonstration on the experiment to determine the refractive index of glass and a liquid by total internal reflection using a spectrometer fitted with a Gaussian eyepiece. And before I discuss about the theory of this experiment, let me first give you a brief introduction to the Gaussian eyepiece. What is the working principle of the Gaussian eyepiece? This is the schematic diagram of a Gaussian eyepiece. It has two plano convex lenses. This is called field lens F and this is called the eye lens E. And there is a cross wire in front of the field lens. If the focal length of the two lenses be F, then the separation between F and E lens is two third of F. That means 2F by 3. And this cross wire is kept at a distance F by 4 from the field lens. So this eyepiece is just like a Ramsday eyepiece with two additional features. One feature is one hole is kept here in the side of the eyepiece and then one glass plate is kept inside the eyepiece at an angle 45 degree with respect to the axis of the eyepiece. And light can be introduced through this hole and can be sent through the field lens and cross wire and this Gaussian eyepiece is attached with the spectrometer telescope and this side this field lens and cross wire is kept towards the prism table of the spectrometer and the image is observed through the eye lens like this and this eyepiece is used to determine the axis of the rotation of the telescope with respect to the optical axis of the spectrometer. So all the time optical axis of the spectrometer should be vertical with respect to the axis of the telescope and the collimeter. So this Gaussian eyepiece has advantage of perfect alignment to take the reading of the image more accurately. And in this case as we are able to illuminate the cross wire with the help of this light, we get the reading more and more accurately. Now I come to the theory of the experiment. This entire experiment is performed with the help of a spectrometer and a prism. So this is the schematic of a prism. This prism has two polished surfaces AB and AC and this is the unpolished surface. This is the unpolished surface. Now, if we illuminate the unpolished surface with a big source of light, then the points on the unpolished surface of the prism P 
P1, P2, etc. send the light towards the other surfaces like this. So if we take for example P as the source of light then P will send out light like this PQ, PR, PS etc. Similarly P1 and P2 can also act like a source of light and can send out light like this, this way. Now when the light from P reaches Q and if the angle of incidence here becomes less than the critical angle with respect to air medium then there will be reflection in and refraction out of the prism. This reflected light will reach the point D and then it will again have refraction along DD1. So this reflected light becomes less intense than the incident light. As the incident light is distributed towards this direction as reflected light and towards this direction as refracted light, the intensity of the light along QD will be less than the incident light intensity PQ. Now if we move from Q towards this then the angle of incidence here becomes equal to the critical angle and at that critical angle uh, the incident light on reflection will graze along this surface BA. So no light will come out, no light will come back within the prism and when we reach R and the angle of incidence theta becomes more than critical angle then there will be only reflection inside the prism along RE no refraction out of the prism therefore the reflected light RE will be as bright as the incident light PR and that RE light reaching the surface AC at the point E will again have a refraction at an angle phi when the angle of incidence here is alpha. So at this E point the intensity of light becomes maximum then any point at the left of the point E because the entire light has reflected back from the point R to the point E and same phenomena occurs for other points like S. Yes. Here also entire light will have total internal reflection like what happened in case of the point R. So due to total internal reflection this point E, F etc which are towards right of the point E will have maximum intensity and the points which are towards the left of the point E will have less intensity. So seeing through the telescope we will be able to make out the a vertical line of demarcation. So about that line through the point E this side will have maximum intensity and this side will have less intensity. So in this experiment if we measure the angle phi and if we know the angle of prism A, B, C which are roughly 60 degree we can find out the refractive index of the material of the prism using the formula mu is equal to sin square phi plus 1 plus cos a sin phi upon sin a square to the power whole to the power half. 
So this is the working formula to measure the refractive index of the material of the prism. Similarly, we can measure the refractive index of a liquid and for that we have to make use of the liquid like this. So in the polished surface, suppose AB, we have to put one or two drop of water and then we have to make use of a thin glass plate and such that there becomes a thin layer of the liquid like this schematic picture between the glass plate and the prism over the polished surface. If we can make a thin layer of liquid and if we repeat the same experiment that means we have to find out the line of demarcation and we have to find the angle phi then we will be able to calculate the refractive index of the liquid using this formula mu l is equal to sin a root over mu a square minus sin square phi minus cos a sin phi where this phi is this refraction angle or angle of refraction. So now let me discuss about the derivation of the working formula I just now talked about. So this is the derivation of the working formula. So if we make use of liquid in this surface in one of the polished surfaces so for derivation of the working formula we have to consider the critical angle theta so for critical angle theta when the angle of refraction becomes 90 degree in that case mu l sin 90 is equal to mu l is equal to mu sin theta because mu is the refractive index of the glass medium of the prism and mu l is the refractive index of the liquid and at this point we have the angle of incidence alpha and angle of refraction phi therefore for the refractive index of the medium of the prism mu sin alpha is equal to 1 into sin phi or air when the outside medium is air. So this is for the liquid and this is for the air medium. And now if I consider the quadrilateral A E M R. In this quadrilateral this angle is 90 degree and this angle is 90 degree because this RM and EM they are the perpendicular to the refracting surfaces and this angle is the angle of prism A therefore this angle will be that RME angle will be equal to 180 degree minus A and thus from the triangle MRE we have this angle 180 minus A this angle theta angle of reflection and this angle again angle of incidence alpha this sum of the three angles is equal to 180 degree and this gives rise to theta is equal to E minus alpha therefore from this equation if this equation we take number 1 and this if we take 2 then from equation 1 from equation 1 mu L is equal to mu sin theta means A minus alpha and from the trigonometric formula sin A minus alpha is equal to sin A cos alpha minus cos A sin alpha and this equation we label it this becomes 3 this becomes 4 and from equation 2 
फ्रॉम टू साइन स्क्वायर अल्फा इज इक्वल टू साइन स्क्वायर फाइव बाई न्यू स्क्वायर एंड देन कॉस स्क्वायर अल्फा इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस साइन स्क्वायर अल्फा देर बोल कॉस स्क्वायर अल्फा इज इक्वल टू न्यू स्क्वायर माइनस साइन स्क्वायर अल्फा बाई न्यू स्क्वायर देर फोर फ्रॉम इक्वेशन फोर न्यू एल इज इक्वल टू साइन ए रूट ओवर म्यू ए स्क्वायर माइनस साइन स्क्वायर फाइव माइनस कॉस ए साइन फाइव दिस इज द वर्किंग फॉर्मूला फॉर द रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द लिक्विड एंड दिस फॉर्मूला विल बी कन्वर्टेड फॉर द मेटीरियल ऑफ द प्रिजम इफ वी कंसिडर म्यू एल इज इक्वल टू वन दैट मीन्स इफ वी टेक एयर मीडियम इंस्टेड ऑफ वाटर देन म्यू एल बिकम्स वन एंड इट गेट्स कन्वर्टेड टू वन इज इक्वल टू साइन ए टू वन म्यू स्क्वायर माइनस साइन स्क्वायर फाइव माइनस कॉस ए साइन फाइव और म्यू इज इक्वल टू साइन स्क्वायर फाइव प्लस वन प्लस कॉस ए साइन फाइव साइन ए स्क्वायर होल्ड टू दी पावर हाफ सो दिस इज द डेरिवेशन हाउ वी डिराइव द वर्किंग फॉर्मूला फॉर द रिफेटिव इंडेक्स ऑफ ग्लास एंड the liquid and now i come to the schematic of the experimental setup this is the schematic of the experimental setup this is a spectrometer we have telescope and we have source of light this source should be a monochromatic source such as sodium vapor lamp and on top of the prism table we have to put a prism then we have two vernier's v1 and v2 for measurement of the angle phi and what we do basically first of all we have to measure the angle of prism in the usual technique we use in the laboratory so the angle of prism we have to determine first then we have to find out the line of demarcation with the help of gaussian ips attached with the telescope this gaussian ips has the cross wire we have to coincide the cross wire with the line of demarcation here and we have to take the reading of vernier v1 and v2 after that we have to do the normal setting normal setting means we have to position the telescope perpendicular to the prism and with the help of this lamp illuminating the cross wire we have to take the image of the cross wire of the eyepiece inside the prism and matching the image of the cross wire inside the prism with the cross wire of the gaussian eyepiece especially the vertical cross wire should be matched in all the cases coinciding the image of the vertical cross wire with the vertical cross wire we have to again take the reading of v1 and v2 <laughs> and if we take the difference of the two readings then we will be able to find out this phi so this is the basics of the experiment to determine the refractive index of a glass and a liquid by total internal reflection using a spectrometer heated with a gaussian eyepiece and now let's do the experiment okay this is my experimental setup i have spectrometer and this is the prism table this is telescope collimeter and this is sodium vapor lamp and the power supply for the sodium vapor lamp i have the gaussian eyepiece then i have prism i have glass plate and then i have the liquid here i am using water to find out the refractive index of the liquid so let me first show you what is gaussian eyepiece this is the gaussian eyepiece it looks like a ramsey eyepiece but it has one hole here so you can introduce light 
through this and that light will come out this way and it will reach the prism and in this direction and here we have the islands here then we have field lens this side and we have the crosshair in this here inside this and when we send the light through this as I discussed there is a glass plate inside at an angle 45 degree with respect to the axis of this eyepiece and if we introduce the light here then that light will be reflected towards the uh, crosshair along the axis of the eyepiece and it will reach the prism and this is a magnifying device and this gives the image aberration free so quality of the image changes with the use of this particular Gaussian eyepiece and this eyepiece has to be attached with the telescope to take the reading to find out the angle phi as I discussed in the whiteboard and then I have a prism this prism has three surfaces and this is on polished surface and these two are the refracting surfaces and this glass plate is used if we want to find out the refractive index of the liquid then we have to take few drops of the liquid and then we have to put the glass plate like this and due to capillary action this glass plate will get attached here and then we have to do the experiment as I discussed in the whiteboard. Before doing the experiment with the prism, first of all, I have to level the spectrometer with the help of spirit level. So the telescope I have to level, then collimeter I have to level, prism table I have to level, and then we have to introduce the prism on top of the prism table and we have to do the optical leveling and finally we have to do the Suster leveling for parallel rays. So the spectrometer should be made ready for the experiment before doing this particular experiment. So all the leveling must be done accurately to get the accurate data, accurate reading and that way the result will be more accurate. And these two are the Bharniers V1 and V2. So each time we have to take reading in both the Bharniers as I discussed in the whiteboard and you have to calculate the phi. So now I show you how to find out the line of demarcation. So for that I don't have to make use of collimeter. I have to take this source directly and I have to make the light incident on the unpolished surface of the prism. Now I don't have to use the collimeter. Direct light may be introduced on the unpolished surface of the prism. And this surface should be kept perpendicular with respect to the light and with respect to the prism table. Now this light will reach the other surface and 
will be reflected in and refracted out. So I have to keep track where is the line of demarcation. So I have to rotate the telescope to find the line of demarcation. So I am getting it. I am getting it. Okay. So I am getting the line of demarcation. And I am making the vertical crosshair coincident with the line of demarcation. And for that, we have to use the fine screw here, such that vertical crosshair exactly coincides with the line of demarcation. So I have made it coincident with the line of demarcation. So now I have to take the reading of the Fernier V1 and V2. Now I have to go for normal setting. So for that, I don't have to make use of monochromatic light. So I am removing this. So light should not fall on the prism. Now I have to rotate the telescope such that approximately this telescope becomes normal to the refracting surface. So now as I introduce this light through the hole of the Gaussian eyepiece, this light passes through the crosshairs and reaches the prism. And this polished surface of the prism acts like a mirror. Therefore, we are able to see the image of the crosshair. Now, this telescope should be aligned such that the image of the crosshair should coincide with the crosshair when we look through the Gaussian eyepiece. So, we have to match here the vertical crosshair. And when it is matched, in that case, we have to do the fine movement such that the coincidence become perfect and in this situation once again we have to take the reading of the V1 and V2. So earlier we had the reading for line of demarcation and now we have the reading for normal setting. So if we take the difference of the two then we will be able to find out the angle phi as I showed you in the whiteboard. Then I come to the other part that means to find the refractive index of a liquid with the same procedure. So for that we have to take the liquid. So as I told you I am taking water, few drops of water on this refracting surface and then I am taking this thin glass plate and making it so the capillary action has locked the glass plate and in this case now I have to introduce it on this surface on top of the prism table and we have to repeat the experiment once again. So once again we have to introduce the strong light on the unpolished surface of the prism and then you have to look for line of demarcation through this surface. So you have to check 
where is the line of demarcation so for that I am rotating I am rotating rotating uh, line of demarcation has come and I am making it coincident with the vertical crosshair and we can use the fine screw to make it perfectly coincident with the vertical crosshair and if once again we have to take the reading of V1 and V2 and like before for the normal setting we have to remove the strong light and then we have to make the telescope nearly perpendicular with respect to this refracting surface of the prism and then we have to once again introduce the light through this hole and try to look for the image of the crosshair and for that we may have to adjust the telescope position a little maybe with the help of coarse rotation and fine rotation okay now I am getting it so when the telescope becomes perfectly perpendicular with respect to the refracting surface then we get the image of the crosshairs coincident with the crosshairs and for the reading the vertical crosshair coincidence is enough so if we are able to coincide the vertical crosshairs that is sufficient so now it is coincident and now we have to take once again the reading of V1 and V2 so again the difference of the two readings of V1 and V2 will be equal to the angle phi that is needed to calculate the refractive index of the liquid and to find the angle of prism we know the standard technique so I am not explaining that here so for the experiment we have to first level the entire setup by help of spirit level then optical leveling then Schuster leveling then we have to measure the angle of prism and then we have to find out the phi once first for the prism and secondly for the liquid so now let's get back to the whiteboard one second so I have showed you how to determine the refractive index of a glass and a liquid by total internal reflection using a spectrometer fitted with a Gaussian eyepiece and the prism I have taken is made of flint glass and the reading uh, table for the experiment is the following I have the number of observation and the reading of Varnia V1 and V2 for line of demarcation and reading of Varnia V1 and V2 for normal setting and I have to take difference of the two reading for V1 and for V2 and then I have to take the mean so in this way with the help of these two formulas we can find out the refractive index of thin glass for the prism and the liquid such as water etc at the room temperature and I hope you all will be able to perform the experiment in the laboratory and students will be very happy thank you thank you for watching this video have a nice day